Okay, so um, every data scientist out there has their own uh, favorite way of thinking about data. So some people put their data in Excel and they think about rows and columns. Some people use matrices and they use linear algebra as their toolkit to investigate their data. Me, I like to think about my data as a graph. And there's no way that that's more natural than when you work with social software. Um, so, you know, we're kind of used to the idea that you can sort of model human relationships in the real world approximately by creating these, these diagrams, these ball and stick diagrams of a tightly knit social network. Now, there's a pretty deep and actually decades old um, mathematical uh, discipline behind this stuff, social network analysis, that tries to give us some insight into social networks by looking at the structure, just sort of looking at the, the, the sort of connections between people, but without any actual knowledge of the social or cultural things that lead to um, these connections. So there's very mathematical ways of calculating things like centrality, which nodes in a network are the most uh, sort of vital to the information flow, perhaps the people most likely to get retweeted on Twitter. Um, there are also ways to look at the sort of the subgraphs within the graph and find the most, tense, the most densely packed subgraphs, detect the communities within a social graph. So you might look at the people that I'm following on Twitter and within them find um, maybe my work colleagues versus the people I socialize with face to face. And we're used to seeing um, features on sites like LinkedIn that seem almost sort of magical and spooky, this people you might know. And a big part, thank you there from the LinkedIn crowd, a big part of how they work is by traversing these graphs. They're just walking around, starting at you and going, okay, who might you know because they seem to be part of your network? Anyway, enough of the mathematics. Let's talk about Belgium for a second. <laughs> Belgium is a really fascinating country, you, I, would, I, I claim, um, in the northwest of Europe. Um, it's sandwiched physically and culturally, between the Netherlands to the north um, and France to the south. And so the result of this, as a small country, is that um, everyone in Belgium either speaks French or Dutch. And there's a north-south divide, but it's not completely sort of clear. So wouldn't it be interesting if we could look at the graph of that? Not who's hit I friend you on Facebook, but actual connections. So some researchers in Belgium were able to work with the um, mobile phone company there, and they got an anonymized set of 2.6 million phone call records. Just which number has called which number? It doesn't matter who they are. And they're able from that to make not, a, not so much a social graph, but a call graph. They developed algorithms at the university there, which are, uh, I, I think are related to the ones used in LinkedIn InMaps these days, that without any knowledge of French or Dutch or what a telephone is, were able to distinguish who the French people are and who the Dutch people are, just because they have such densely uh, packed networks. So what if we step back and look at these graphs and say, well, what other graphs could I make to turn these powerful tools onto? Well, I work in um, location-based services at Nokia, and so my first thing that I turn to with this is place. What would be a place graph? If cities had friends, who would be their best friends? Would New York be better friends with LA than with Portland? Maybe. I mean, how could we build a graph like this? We need some data to look at what are the connections between places. And people make connections between places, of course. So I fired up the, the Hadoop cluster, uh, Nokia Berlin, went to the logs from our routing system that's used behind our Maps application. So anytime anyone had requested a route, a driving route from A to B, anywhere in the world, geocode it, put it into a graph, and say, OK, if I drive from Berlin to Potsdam, Berlin and Potsdam have some connection. And I was able to redraw the map of the world. We've got the entire world here, not plotted by geography, but plotted by sort of affinity, by the likelihood that a person is going to drive from one city to another. And it, it doesn't look like much, but if I put some labels on there, um, we can see that there are things that look like islands that actually are not islands. So Spain um, is not an island, but it's on a kind of peninsula off the edge of Europe. And so it's very unlikely that you would drive from Spain to the rest of Europe. So Spain sort of drifts off into its own island in that way. So how can we turn this to a practical application? Well, say you're coming to New York to attend a big data conference, um, and you don't get to come to New York too often, and you know, you've got to pick where your hotel is going to be. So obviously, you, know, you could pick a hotel uh, in the conference venue, but maybe you want to stay somewhere more interesting. But perhaps you've never been to New York before. Um, perhaps you've been to San Francisco, and in San Francisco, you like, to stay, you like Union Square and downtown. Uh, in London, you like... Um, uh, sort of Piccadilly Circus in the West End. You could ask a friend, someone who knows both uh, New York and London, uh, if I like Piccadilly Circus, where should I stay? And they could tell you, that, okay, Times Square is kind of the Piccadilly Circus of London, so Times Square is probably a good choice for you. But perhaps you like, you know, more interesting parts of town. Um, perhaps I, I, you know, um, I like Hackney in London, and I like um, other parts of um, San Francisco. So. We could interrogate this place graph and ask the questions, what's the Greenwich Village of Tokyo? What's the Noe Valley of New York, the Shibuya of Los Angeles? Can we create place isomorphisms, find the, the mutually sort of equivalent neighborhoods across cities and make cities more enjoyable to visit and easier to use? Perhaps you'd like to come and work with me on this. Come talk to me later. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.